Hi, Dr. Anthony Revis here with Watch Me Do It. So I want you to watch me do it when it with this uh, chemical bond and hybridization molecular geometry Vesper structures. So it's that type of concept. We're going to work through a couple of things. And we're going to do it from this one single chart here, okay? So we're going to write all over this. It's probably get really messy. So hang in there. Now what we're going to look at is the total valence electrons uh, here. And we'll just do some of this chart. We'll leave the rest of you. Uh, we might draw some Lewis structures. Uh, steric number is going to be pretty important to what we want to make sure you see, ABE format. Vesper form, and when we say the Vesper form, we'll be talking about whether it's tetrahedral, uh, linear, those types of things, the hybridization, okay? You wanna be aware that that, this, uh, that there are different terms of use, for example, you hear terms like domain, name, uh, use, and you'll also hear things like electronic geometry used to describe some of these. So you wanna be aware of that, that they that depend on whose text you use or where you read it, you might see something different. So what you'll you'll know how to do this when you see see the answers here, okay? So just keep that in mind. All right, so here we go. So we, we may do valence electrons. Why not? Let's just do them. When it comes to the valence electrons, you can really go to the periodic table and get this over really quickly, right? You have hydrogen and you have two of them, right? And where it's located. Uh, so hydrogen um, by itself has one valence electron. So that's two of those hydrogens times one. That's gonna give you two. And we have oxygen here, uh, which is on the periodic table group 16. So that's six. So total valence electrons used to make this is eight. So that's what you do there. So you just calculate, okay? Simple math, don't do anything deeper than that. The Lewis structure has to be bent. We'll draw that here for you. Probably move on from drawing so many of these. But we'll just show it to you there. So we have that, and we just said that it's bent, right? It's Vesper form is what we call bent or angular. And I use the word Vesper form for this, or we should perhaps say Vesper geometry. Okay, it's bent here and it's angular. So you'll hear Vesper geometry used here, okay? And you'll hear uh, uh, other terms used to describe these. So just be aware of it, but this is basically your molecular your geometry. And I just want to use the term Vesper to reinforce that to you. And then we have what's called the ABE domain format name here. And we name this by saying uh, the central atom is called, is basically A. And then we look to see what we have around it based on the Lewis structure. And we have a two atoms around it. So that's gonna be your B, two around it. And we have two sets of lone pairs. So E is going to be electrons, lone pair. You have two sets of lone pair electrons. The hybridization here around the oxygen, uh, it has four geometrical spaces cover, uh, uh, that have species in them. Two of them are loaded with atoms and two with uh, electrons. So two of your uh, electronic spaces are covered by uh, lone pairs and two by atoms. So that's a sp3. And here's how you know it. You have one in the s, you have three in the p's. That equals four. That's the number of spaces. Locations. So you have these geometrical locations where you can put uh, either atoms or electrons, and that comes out to be sp3. So just following through, we'll do a couple more here. Uh, carbon dioxide, we have uh, uh, four uh, base electrons from carbon and two times six from oxygen. And it's a little crowded here, but that's okay. And so whatever that, uh, that <laughs> turns out to be, you can just calculate those there and so that's uh, 12 uh, plus four, 16 total. So make sure we do the do the right arithmetic, right arithmetic here, okay? So that's the total base electron used here. Uh, in this particular case, we get a linear geometry. That's what this little structure looks like. So the geometry, the Vesper geometry, and this should be really say geometry here, okay? So keep that in mind. That's what we're really talking about here, okay? And this is linear. Uh, draw us a little bit here. 
And so this is linear. Uh, oh, by the way, the steric number is what we're talking about when we say the SP3, that's four here. We have four groups around there. Around this one, we have two steric regions that are occupied here, two uh, bonding regions are occupied here. And so this is going to be A for the central atom, B, I have two things around that central atom with no electrons. And the hybridization, I have two things, I have to have an S, alpha two, so it's SP, hybridization around the carbon. Um, count these electrons up, you have 15 plus three, 18 total valence electrons here. Geometry looks like this, kicked off of uh, not, a, not a very good, uh, and so not a very good tetrahedral sp3. So its base geometry would be, uh, would be tetrahedral. However, because these electrons are pushing these hydrogens down, this is called trigonal, meaning three, Oops, pyramid, pyramidal. So trigonal, I'll write out here. Okay, middle. I am not writing too well right now, am I? That's a lot better. I told you, this is watch me do it. You see it all live. Around this, we have four steric groups around it. One, two, three hydrogens along pair. The geometry A for the central atom. It's always A. B, how many groups they have around it? Find the elements, three. And how many lone pairs? One. Get it? Let's just go on down here to BF3. BF3 is going to be looking like this because there are no lone pairs on the boron or central atom. Therefore, it's hybridization is gonna be sp2, two, two, three, three things around it. It's gonna have an a, b, three with no e on it. And this is just gonna be called trigonal, planar. Okay. And so that's how we do these and we go through and we can do any of the others the same way. Um, here, this is an A, B, to show you the AB, one, two, three, four, AB, four, doesn't matter what the groups are, you just put them around it. And this one, this one's uh, a little bit more tricky here. Um, so we have all five groups around, around it. Um, so we have one, so let's draw it out here, I'm sorry. B, and we have five, one, two, let's see, we'll draw it like this, wedge, one, two, three, four, and five, and so BR, no lone pairs left on that, so this is going to be an A, B, five, is what we have here. And then you could perhaps do the others. This is gonna be a SP3 hybridized. This is going to be a SP3. We run out at three as high as we can go, but we have to count five things, one, two, three, four. So it's gonna be a D uh, there. And so here the hybridization is gonna be SP3. How many that's four? So we're gonna have a D2, you get it? All right, and then you have the other geometries, which I'm sure you could play with and figure out Steer groups around here is only three, four, five, et cetera. Okay, got it? So that's how we look at uh, the molecular geometry when we do these Vesper uh, type geometry problems. And keep in mind, the Vesper form is really your Vesper geometry is what you really wanna look at there. Okay, it's called geometry, all right? That's how we do it.